The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Monday, the 3rd of June. We're just getting everything back again. I uh, had a little conflict with something, I guess, but we're getting there. Give me one second. You'll see it pop up. Okay. So we're looking at the Dow down 61. And my impression is being from uh, usually that very last hour spike when you get a rocket ship like that, then you give back at least a third to a half of the last hour. Well, that would be a lot to give back. So at least right now, we're looking at a minus uh, 52 on the Dow uh, at uh, 38,000, what is that, 641. The S&P is up 12 at 5,290. I'm just another second or two, and I'll get back all the charts. And we're looking at, and this is going to be very important, the IWM, the Russell 2000, now up 35 cents. It was up quite a bit more earlier on. I want to see that rotation to the small caps here. And then you've got the SMHs, which is the uh, the, um, the, the uh, semiconductor index. And that's <laughs> this is going to be very interesting because it's up at uh, $3.02 at 243.50. It had a Chapman Roman candle um, on Friday. I'll show you that in a moment. Here it comes, come on. There you are. Come on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Boom. Boom. Uh, hello. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Boom. So this is what we're looking at. Look at the SMHs. The SMHs, right? I didn't type that in the wrong place. There we go. SMHs, semiconductors trading up. <clears throat> 2.72 starting to slip after the big uh, push from. Okay, let me let me expand this a little bit. Here we go. If you look at this daily chart on the left, and this is really important this week. If you're looking at the semiconductors, it made a high, all-time high of 250.85, and that was on the was it 27th or 28th? It was the 28th of May. So 250.85. Has a doji candle the next day, that makes a peak D, a big red candle the following day, and a huge red, red candle intraday with the nine period moving average still really strong, but it goes from the the um, nine period moving average right through the 14 period moving average and drops down to 234.25. Hey, in four days, we haven't seen a decline like this uh, since that big smash to the downside around about the 22nd of April. So that was really something. When that buying spree came along on Friday, besides the fact that this is really fascinating. Let me put the whole thing together as far as I'm concerned. Look, look at the Dow on Thursday. What did it do? It came down to the Chapman Wave inside wedge target support line, the dashed pink support line. And it went to what? It went to 38,000. This is fascinating. 38,000.96. So, in other words, there was a round number. 38,000 low on Thursday. I said to the subscribers, let's be careful. Let's take profits from our short position from the very day of the high. Let's take some profits. And let's see what happens. Well, what happened was a lot more than I was anticipating. A big spiral to the upside. But, and this is going to be very important, look, the MACD was still very weak. The 9 period was under the 14, very, very weak. The relative strength did bounce a little bit, but it really wasn't very much. This unbalanced volume pulled back sharply. This stochastic, I said I anticipated to go down to the single digits. It did. Now, I said 14%, still very weak. So in the overall spectrum, <clears throat> For me, nothing very much changed. Yes, we did get out of that, that S and P short position, and yes, we did get into the uh, get out of the um, uh, semiconductor short position, but we're back in that short position. And one of the reasons is when I put this together. Look, I've got all this with the Dow, saying that the daily chart is still very, very. Um, it was very oversold on that Thursday. It's still somewhat overbought. 
And if you're looking at the weekly chart, this cuff formation that goes to a second cuff formation, it should be trading in this trading range, and that's exactly what it's doing. So that means there's semiconductors, which usually lead us up and lead us down. Um, I'm looking at this and I'm saying, ah, uh -uh, wait a minute. This is the chapter we've Roman candle. If there is a close above this Roman candle for two out of three sessions, that's really positive and it makes the midpoint actually a very strong support level. If we give back, we've got to be real careful because at any time in the next, you've got two days with the Chapman Wave Roman Candle particular technique. I don't think it's going to work this way, but I'm just saying that if it was to, to trade for an hour and a half below 238.11, there's 238.11, there's a real good chance very quickly it'll be on its way to the low that was made at 234.26. I don't think so. I think there's still some residual strength in the semiconductors, but I do think that uh, the upside of 250.85, that uh, all-time high, at this point, I think it's going to be a little difficult to uh, surpass that just at this particular moment. All right, I wanted to get that out of the way. Now let's do a couple of other things. When we're looking at the small caps, the IWM, <clears throat> the I IWM is trading at 206.01. And that's just up 28 cents. It's really not very much. Now, there's a technique that I developed a long time ago. Long time ago. There it is. And that's this technique that I call the Chapman Wave uh, Falling Axe Formation. Now, I just need to find this. Let me get it right there. I had to do a lot of things just between the uh, market update and uh, at 10 o'clock and my show. Uh, so I'm just getting everything back again. Now, look at this. This is a particular technique that has tremendous valid validity. Um, as it f unfolds, you, you've got to identify it as something that's going to unfold. Usually you get your peak D, E, or F, and you start to make lower highs and much lower lows, and you see a trend line down and a much wider trend line at the bottom. It's like a, like an expanding cone. I call it the falling axe. Here's the handle. Here's the open blade. And then what happens all of a sudden, it finds some support, and that support says, hey, I'm now going to test that trend line. If I take that out, I can look at each higher peak as, as a target on the, on the left side. So that becomes almost an expansion, a one-to-one -one parallel expansion to the upside. Well, we haven't started it yet. We just, the, the day is young. We went right to the line. And then we pull back. This is today. If by Wednesday, let's give it a couple of days. If by Wednesday, the uh, IWM, the Russell 2000, is actually pushing into the 209.80. What was I today? 207.55. 209.80 area or higher. That's going to be really important for the small caps because they've under-participated for a couple of years. So this is going to be very important. Can this particular rotation include the small caps as participants in a bull phase. All right. Well, have a look at this falling X formation and have a look at the SMHs. SMH right here. Hmm, I just heard a little noise that I uh, should. Yeah, 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 there are. So here's the SMHs. And it's the same thing, a much deeper one. So now I can say, all right, let's do this. Let's be very generous. We'll raise that. Well, there's only two uh, points of contact. We'll raise it and see whether or not the SMHs are able to get to the high today's 245.44. Let's see if they get to 246.80 in the next day or two. I'll be back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, 
charts and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi everyone, we're back. Basil Chap and Tiger Team Nations Hour on this Monday. Monday the third of June. So what we're looking at is do we see a rally attempt in the Russell 2000 or does it fail if the general market fails? And does the semiconductor, uh, the the components you've got NVIDIA, we're always with great news. Ah, no, there's, there's always great news. Hasn't they made an all-time high? It went 1158.19, if I'm not mistaken. I think that was the high. Uh, let me just make sure that I'm squeezing this. Uh, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. There it is. Yeah, 1158.19, uh, just uh, three sessions ago, Thursday. Pulls back Friday and a very nice rally today, up 30 at 11.35. But I, to me, what I'm looking at here, based on this on balance volume, based on this, the stochastic now at 86%, still very strong, it was up in the 90 something percent area just a few days ago. The nine over the 14, this is a work in progress, and the MAGD is still strong on uh, the red strength starting to pull back. This is a work in progress in the sense that I'm looking at this particular chart. Oh, I hope I've still got it right there. Oh, I don't have it on right there. It doesn't matter. So we're looking at the nine period moving average in the NVIDIA. And I suspect that over a period of two weeks, maybe even three weeks, we'll see it start to decline. The nine period moving average getting closer to the 14. I don't know in this particular move if it's going to turn down and go negative. But in, what I am looking at is... <clears throat> The daily is strong, the weekly is strong, the monthly is strong. 120 minute chart. I, wouldn't, I shouldn't have said that until I knew I could get it. There it is. Okay, good. 120. Um, yeah, it's weakened a little bit, but still, that nine is over the 14. So we'll see. So this is the lead. I'm not going to take too much time about this. But I had some questions. Let me get to that. Here we go. Oh, yeah. can't be too quick on this stuff, huh? Because if you don't see something and you press the button, it could change things. So TSLA. That's Tesla. I said some time ago, don't get carried away with Tesla. Just think of it this way. When it starts to just walk the nine period moving average, and I'm about to sneeze. Um, it can go sideways for a lot longer than your patience. And that's exactly what it's doing right now. It's up $1.72. What's the big deal? It's just stuck between about 185 and probably 175, maybe even 172. It's just stuck there. It's not breaking down, not breaking up. It's just there. But let's look at the others. Look, Apple. 
very important. Apple's making new highs, not all-time highs, but new recovery highs, and that's really important. This is the leg B in the, uh, um, ooh, that's interesting, brand new leg B in the weekly chart, and it's trying to walk the uh, expansion in the monthly chart, and it's in the upper end. So that's really important. As far as I'm concerned, Apple, uh, considering it more as a dividend play, it's, 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 how can I put it? It's a stock that has growth, but growth more based on accumulated monthly income through various means than as a, a spectacular uh, innovator. I don't think it's the kind of innovator it used to be, in other words, product-wise. It might it's still become that, but at this particular point, it's just producing really good gains plus some capital uh, and that's good. Look at Microsoft. Microsoft is trading right now um, down, I think, yep, down a point at uh, 414, 414. Had a very nice turnaround after a very ugly session on Friday, but it's still kind of stuck. And I suspect that that nine period moving average, which is green in the daily chart, is going to turn pink and have uh, a confirmation that Microsoft, which is in a sell signal at this particular point, is really close to a sell mode, and it's just going to go sideways. I think it's not going to break down. I just think it's going to take a, a, a very, a couple of weeks, a continuous digestive phase, which has been in for, and look, sideways. If you even think about it, even give it a little bit of room between 420 and 440, it's only 20 points over a period of um, almost the entire year. I mean, let's, let's just say since February. It's just consolidating, huge gains. You can see that here in the monthly chart as well. Look at um, Netflix. Netflix is trading, uh, it was almost at, uh, a recovery high on Friday, on Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah, so it's, it's still up near the highs, not the all-time high of 700.99, having missed in the round number 701 high by one penny. And Netflix is, is doing very nicely. It's in leg D in the uh, um, weekly, monthly chart. And if you look at this as a rectangle, very, you know, I have these webinars that I, I had uh, discuss the three types of, um, there we go, the three types of rectangles, the very large rectangle that takes time and price to the downside, the, the narrow rectangle, you saw that last night, if you're looking at, let me just go here, if you're looking at, uh, let's go to the 10 minute chart, I think you can see it a little easier there, yeah, look at the 10 minute chart, it's just been in a range, not a big deal, just a range, look at that, all the way, you can even go back to uh, Friday's close, Look there, let's just go back after this spectacular move. It's just been in this range after a spectacular move. I mean, even the last hour, you're looking at it going from the E mini from the 5220, 52.20 level to the high that was made at 53, almost 53.20, 53.07. That was a spectacular move. And then it just stuck in this little range, this narrow range of about 10 points. Was it even 10 points? Let's just have a look. Uh, that's between. 53.07 and 52.91. Yeah, uh, let's call it 10 points all the way through from Friday through Sunday night through where we are right now. Isn't that amazing how that can happen? So, all right, with that said, a couple of things are going on here. Very important. I wanted to just show you uh, the patterns. So this is the lot. This is the big rectangle. So there's a rectangle where you can see a V-shaped recovery. There's a rectangle that you can get an arch formation that goes almost to the, to the, remember the rule of the rectangle is that if it starts to make higher highs and higher lows, making a lopsided gravy cup kind of pattern or a lopsided V-shape or cup formation, it can go to just on, just under, or just above the previous high in leg D, and then be careful. Where, where are we? We're in leg D. Where did it go? 700.99 was all-time high of Netflix. And the last high was right here. That was peak C, D, E, peak, the peak E on the 29th of May at 664.25. Isn't that amazing? Uh, just to count. 664. It goes from November of 2021, 700, let's call it 701, goes to 162 May of 2022 and then it comes all the way back it takes exactly two years to get back to the high that was made where 664 did i say 64 yeah 664.25 that's six points 
I mean, that's amazing, isn't it? From the all time high. All right, well, enough with that. So, what we're looking at, let me just finish this notation because uh, you might be wondering where the notation went to. It's right there. Okay, leg E goes to a peak E, and now it's having a bit of a rest. So, that's Netflix. Hey, how about uh, we look at um, you got Apple, Amazon? Amazon is trading. If I can hit the right uh, button, there it is. Amazon is trading at uh, 176.98. It's 177 round number, actually, as we speak, up 57 cents. So with that, we made 191.70 all the time. No, uh, recovery high uh, in May. The all-time high is 188.65 back in July of 2021. Slumps down to 81s, over 100 points down. Come all the way back. Makes it slightly... Ooh, uh, let me do this uh, when we come back. Slightly higher high. I'll be back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi folks, we're back, and I'm just looking at this in the den. I'm not sure I even read this, 
SMR halted due to technical glitch. Oh, okay, just a technical glitch, I see. Because there's a stock that's down a 98.51%. Uh, it's at 13 cents, down $8.60. says SMR, Nuclear Power Corporation. I whoa. Uh, this is a very big red candle. All right, let's hope that it's just a technical glitch and it'll be resolved. Uh, I don't see anything else. Uh, anyway, let's just get back to our story. I hope that it gets resolved as a, a technical glitch. So this is what I want you to do. With, within the context of, um, I thought I'd do this if I can get it uh, placed. There we go. Yeah, I thought I'd do this. Here is... I'm getting the, okay, I've got that. I need to just press these buttons and I'll be okay. Now I don't want news, I want stop list. And there it is. So, okay. So within the context of Investor's Business Daily, uh, what I like to do is I like to get the, uh, you can see I'm busy struggling to get this. That's the IBD, I want the 50. Why do they not have 50? There it is, IBD 50. Okay, what I want you to show you is within the context of uh, Investors Business Daily uh, and their list of stocks that they rate, and they rate it, uh, you know, they have their, their methodology and they have a list of all the different ingredients that each one has to uh, follow. Let's just see what NVO, have I updated the chart of NVO? No, I haven't. No, I haven't. Um, NVO, no Nova Nordisk. Uh, trading uh, down up two cents is 135.30, almost at an all-time high. And this cup formation that I'm looking at with uh, a number, look, Eli Lilly, uh, same thing. Lilly made a cup formation, but it took out the left side uh, high. And it's made an all-time high as we speak. It's making an all-time high at 829.38, up $9.04. Merck. So there, there are a couple of stocks within the different sectors. In this particular sector, this is the big pharma. So big pharma, there are some real blockbusters that are out there um, that are just garnering tremendous profits. So Merck was up there and it pulled back just on a purely technical basis, going from the 133 area to the 123 area, and now it's back at 126, acting really well. So what I wanted to point out is within the context of the market that I'm looking at right now, each sector has got some a handful of really strong winners and then quite a number of stocks that are not participating that well. But even in the winners, there's some selectivity. So if you go to, so J.P. Morgan in the financial sector was an absolute winner. It was doing fantastic. And then all of a sudden, uh, what was it, Jamie Dimon, I think, said, some talked to, spoke about his retirement. And it went from 205.88, an all-time high, that very same day huge red candle. It went all the way down to 196. I believe it was 196 something, uh, 195.40. So that's 10 point. It's not a big deal when you're looking at the chart, making higher highs and higher lows. But it's a very different chart to say um, Citibank. Citibank, which is um, not even close to its all-time high. It was back at $80 down in um, 2021. And it comes sliding all the way down, gets cut in half, goes below 40, and it comes back. And now it's trading at 62.16. Or Bank of America, Bank of America, which made an all-time high of 50.11 back in February of 2022. I did a peak D with a Chapman Wave 2 bar reversal. And it comes sliding all the way down to the 25 area. And now it's trading at 39.74 at a fabulous session on Friday. Uh, it's now at 39.74. Um, having made an extension, yep, that's a leg E today's high is 40.19. Uh, so we're watching this very close. Oh, I should mention we are long been wrong for for a long time. This is a very interesting stock. We've had Bank of America almost for subscribers almost every year for the last within the last I think eight years. We've had it almost every year. We've we held off about a year before we got it back again, just at about uh, 31, 32, and here it is at 39. Um, and I, I like it. There are certain sectors. So this is what I'm saying, that within some sectors, there are real leaders, and then there are stocks that are participating very well, and then there are stocks that are kind of lagging in where they were once upon a time, but are still doing quite nicely. In that category, you've got Schwab. You've got Schwab, which is trading down uh, 45 cents at 72.83. 
all-time high of 96.24 back in February of 2022. Slumps down to the 43 area. Um, has a good rally to 80, and now it's gone from back over the last two weeks. It's given back a chunk, and it's trading at 72.85. And you can see how it was leading. Suddenly, there's some bad news like Goldman Sachs. Suddenly, there was some, some, something that disturbed the uh, rally, and it's pulled back. But I think it's doing quite nicely, uh, whereas you look at Hood, Robin Hood, and that is almost at recovery highs as we speak. Yep, it is at 22.40. It's down just 51. It's up 51 cents at 21.41, down from the high that I wanted to say. But it's getting closer and closer to the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart, of, and that's at 22.96. So to me, this is what we're looking at, and I think this is what I, I'm trying for my subscribers. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get into areas that. The sector is doing well. The stocks, these particular stocks, usually do well, but they haven't done well for a little while. They've taken real big beating, and now they're on the path to recovery. Now, we don't have Robin Hood. I like Robin Hood is the symbol, H-O-O-D. But I think this is in the category that once was 85 round number high back in August of 2021, and it comes all the way down to the $6.81 level. And now it's trading at 21.45. That's a pretty decent uh, three, three point, uh, three, 300% gain. But at the same time, what we're really looking at is um, it's in a little bit of a digestive phase right now. Uh, I would say it's a high-level consolidation. But when you think about what it did, going from 85 down to the 6 area, and now it's at 21.46. Higher highs and higher lows, it's a really good theme. I like it. It's, it's doing very well. Now, a, a couple of questions came in now. Where did it go? Oh, I, did I do that correctly? I don't see anything. Oh, that's what's happened. Let me just move this over because every once in a while, the YouTube, Tiger TV YouTube, I can't see where it's... Oh, am I doing something wrong? Yeah, I am. So I'll fix that in the break. In the meantime, back of the rest, Dow is now down 106. This is what we're wanting to see today. Some kind of a give back of that huge expansion to the upside. But at the same time, are we going to see the uh, semiconductors actually pull back again from here? I think so. I think that's the way we're looking at this. I'll be back. That's the chapter. I can finish this up. I'll be back in a moment. I'll be The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. 
All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yes, this is a stock with a symbol. Wow. Wow, up, open something. Open, what is this? Wow. Wow, open West Inc. I'm not sure what they do. Whatever they do, having a nice pop today, up 7.5%, up 39 cents at 5.42. That just showed up on my screamer list. Um, yeah, UAA, UAA. Also, okay, oh, whoa, we just got a bell. We got a little ring, and the ring says we have, if I can move across, there we go. Um, internet, wait, was that for me? Internet service provider. Wow. Oh, wow. Well, thank you. I wondered what it was. Okay. Wow is an internet provider. And let me just go back to it because this is fascinating. I've got a number of stocks like this over the past month that have appeared and they gap up and then they hold the gap really well. And you wonder why, why, what's going on? Because they have gaps all over the show. Well, this one gapped up on the, I think it was May the 5th or 6th. Let me just check. Yeah, it was the 2nd. Uh, it's tootling along at $3.80 as the high. The very next day, the gap's up, and the low is four sixty-five. That's huge. But what happens is it falls just a partial, a little bit of the gap, and it, it goes slightly higher, pulls back, and now it's having a big move over the 200-period moving average. So this is an Internet service provider. Hmm. Um, let's see, five forty-three up 40 cents. Yeah, this is this is a nice chart because of that follow thing. What happens is with the gaps, if the gap is tested and only just a real small part of the gap is filled, but then it makes a higher high, what it says is that I'm turning this whole area, at least in the shorter term, into a very strong support level. And that makes 463, four, I'd say 460 is really important support. And here it is with a high today of already 547. Very interesting. So another question came in. Uh, could I look at, where did it go? Where did it go? Uh, yeah, the GDX. Okay, GDX. Uh, the GDX is trading uh, up four cents at 35.34. Did somebody say something happened to, no, it looks good to me. Anyway, I think it's, in, it's trading uh, right now. Yeah, so it's trading up uh, three cents and um, gone sideways. Remember, we're talking about this H pattern that the nine period moving average was still positive, but it was starting to really struggle. And if you're looking at gold, look at the gold. Whoops, where did that go? Looking at gold right there. <laughs> Got it. Uh, gold is trading up 17 at 2,363. So the nine period moving average is weak. The price is under that. The stochastic's weak at 14%. On balance volume, that's that blue line. It's okay. It's not great. It's not bad. And then 200-period uh, moving average <clears throat> for now is way down at 21.99. So we don't have to discuss that. But the relative strength is holding. Eh, it's just kind of so-so. And the MACD is weak. So we'll see what happens here. But if you're looking at the weekly chart of gold, hey, there's nothing wrong here. So on the nine-period moving average, nine is way over the 14. <coughs> I like that scenario. Look at silver. 
Silver came down a little bit today. It's now up 19 cents at 30.62. The nine period moving average is over the 14. It is pulling back under the 14 uh, at price, but not the nine period moving average. That's still strong, and so is the weekly strong. So these are really good. Look at the SLV. SLV has almost the same pattern. Oh, whoopsie, what did I just do? Ay, ay, ay. Come on, everybody. Let's get on with this. There you go. And let's get on the left side. Uh, whoops, did I do something wrong? I did. There you go. Okay. So, uh, yeah, silver, of course, looks the same. Uh, it's got this U-shaped pattern. The right side is a little bit weaker than the left side, but the nine is still holding very nicely. And the monthly chart is still very strong. Look at platinum. Platinum right now is trading. How does that happen? I'm getting so tired of this. I think it's because of the speed of the mouse that I don't notice. Let's try it again. Platinum. There you go. Yeah, so platinum, of course, I've lost all my notation for some reason. This is going to be very interesting because it's got the same pattern as the, the gold and silver, where there's a left side high, a cup formation, the right side high isn't quite as uh, strong. And now we're looking at the green nine period moving average over the 14, not yet crossing low, although the price is low and it's down 15 at 1,026. I said I'd just do this for someone. Um, they asked me if I could do this again. I did it Friday. This is wheat. Wheat is up uh, just a fraction. It's at 679 and a half, but it's the same thing. Nine is sitting over the on the, above the 14 period moving average. Weekly chart made a peak C. It should try for a peak D um, at this particular point. Uh, looking at uh, soybean, there's a soybean trading down 11 at 11.94 and a quarter. There's that cup formation. Right side was not strong, and now it's pulling back quite sharply. Weekly chart doesn't look very good. And the uh, corn, same thing. Weekly chart doesn't look good. And now the daily chart has done more than a one-to-one -to, -one to the downside. And it says this left side low of the continuous contracts of the 8, 19th of April at 4.44 and a half. It looks like that's the – oh, it's already gone there. Uh, 437. 437 is trading at 439. 437 to 435. Uh, that's the target on the left side. Okay, so what I want you to do is this. When we were looking at um, the market itself, what I said is that that spectacular move on Friday didn't change our position of being short. We did take profits right at the uh, before the open on Friday. Of the spectacular move from that 40,077 high that was made in the 20th down to the low of round number, almost 38,000 on Thursday. We took profits and now it's gone up. We didn't add back anything at this particular point. But what we did do is we added back um, our short position in the semiconductors. And one of the reasons is this look, the semis, why did it move to the right? I, I can't. I just can't handle all this. These changes for for twenty something years. I've had the same thing over and over and over, and then all of a sudden, oh no! Even as I do this, I just change things. Let's see if I can put it back. Put it back there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So what we're looking at is the Dow is now down. Um, I N D U. The Dow is down 176. This is exactly what. I was thinking was a possibility. We tried to activate our plan so that it would be we did not get back into the short uh, S&P. Uh, I think this time I needed some proof. I didn't want to go out on a limb and have everything with positions today that could get stopped out and then it would just not be worth it. So we've got we've got positions now. What I am going to be doing is we've been raising cash. I'm not afraid to be raising cash right now. I think it's quite it's it's prudent as far as I'm concerned, to be saying, hey, uh, there's been a spectacular move. This should be part of a digestive phase that we're looking at right now. And as a result, don't um, just don't get carried away. I, we've raised cash. I, I'm quite happy with that. I think it's a good position to be in, raised cash. So I want you to go back. One more, one more uh, segment coming up. Let me just say that the um, market has been in a consolidation. I suspect it's going to continue for a little while longer. I'll be right back.
Tiger. You've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, hi, folks. We're back from the final segment. Just I had a question about 4-F-O-U-R. Uh, it's trading at 69.95. It's up 2.62 payments uh, company. Uh, peak A, peak B, peak C. Yes, I do like this because of, of what happened Friday into today with a nice gap up, uh, but it's still stuck in a range. I do like it, and if you're all long, I'm going to say hold hold the position, but on a part of it, I would at least have a stop because it kind of went sideways. So the 60, it's at 69.81. Wow, that's uh, 67 to 70. That's a lot. Okay. Um, yeah, just... If it, if it pulls back, give me a yell in the next day or two. If it starts to pull back below 67.80 in the next day or two, just give me, the, we'll have to assess it. But right now it's holding very nicely, and the weekly chart bounced off the 200 period moving average. So, yes, I do like it right here. I like the action. So, let me just sum this up. Uh, we've got, I just, I'll do this one at a time. Here we go. The Dow right now at uh, 10.55 a.m. Eastern Time is at 38,511, down 176. It's made a new recovery high, but it's pulled back quite sharply. If at any point in the next two days, 
The downside under 38,320, it's called a 38,300. That just says that was a false move on Friday, and now we're going back to the sideways consolidation. We don't have to test the 38,000 on Thursday, but that's about that round number. Yep, we certainly can. So that's that. And S&P, I'll just do this very quickly. S&P is now given back a chunk of the gain today. It's down 12 at 52.65. This needs to, this is a Chapman Wave Roman candle in the next two days. Ah, that's a that's a big ask. But let's just say it trades for an hour and a half under 50, the long legged can 52.25. For closes under that, watch out. It could test Friday's low. And the SMHs is a really important SMH. Oh, big red candle. That's what people are hoping to see. Uh, it's down uh, 54 cents to 92. I don't know if it's going to test today's high in the next day or two, but if it breaks under 235. In the next two days, that's the problem for the city. Have a great day. Thank you for Steve Rose and all the great.